Schalke have found their new manager, Karel Gerrards. We're diving into the tactical genius of Karel Gerrards, the man behind the hope. If you're a fan of strategic football and want to understand the mind behind successful game plans, you're in for a treat. But before we jump in, don't forget to hit that subscribe button and ring the bell for more exciting content. Let's get started. Karel Gerrards, a name that should resonate in the football world. Known for his brilliant tactical mind, Gerrards has been a key figure in shaping the success of Royal Union saint julius Today, we'll explore his tactics, strategies, and what to expect at Schalke. Before we dive into the tactics, let's take a quick look at Karel Gerrards' background and some of his career highlights. From his early days on the pitch to his transition into coaching, Gerrards has left an indelible mark on football. Let's hear from the coach himself. I was four years in the club, Unio saint gilloise I think I started in the second division with the club as an assistant. Together with the technical director, we start building the club again to install the culture. And I think from the second season, uh, we promoted to the first division. I think we had 30 points ahead of the second position, so it was a big success. Then we go to the first division. And the first year, we surprised everybody with the second position. And my job in that moment was the, uh, the assistant coach. Last year, I took the job from a head coach and I think again we had, we had a great season in the Belgian Cup. You are in the, the semi-finals, we go out with penalty kicks and uh, in Europe we surprised everybody. We went out to, to Leverkusen in the quarters and of course, I don't know if you know, but in the last minute we lost the championship uh, to be champion of Belgium. So it was hard. To better understand Gerard's tactics, let's analyze some specific strategies that came into play. We'll break down the movements, player positions, and how he orchestrated victories on the field. It's like being in a football masterclass. First, let's look at the formations that Gerrards used when he was managing the Belgian side. He used a number of different formations from the 5-3-2, 3-4-1-2, 3-4-3, 4-3-2, 4-4-1, and the 3-5-2. However, the latter, the 3-5-2, he used the majority of the time at last season. Schalke's best form was during the previous stint in the Svaita Liga. During that run to the Svaita Liga title, the Royal Blues used a 3-5-2 formation a majority of their matches. This would tell you this team should be able to duplicate those efforts by adapting to this new style fairly quickly, especially with a wingback like Thomas Oyan at their disposal. Last season, under Gerard's guidance, the Belgian club exhibited a style of play that heavily relied on creating opportunities from the wide areas. Their wingbacks instrumental in providing crosses into the box and actively supporting the team's offensive movements. This strategic approach was proven effective in generating numerous scoring chances for the team. What we've seen from Schalke is that, that the greatest amount of their opportunities came from the wingback positions, in particularly the left side through Merkin and Oyan. Under the tutelage of Gerards, expect Schalke to improve upon this aspect of their game, leading to more opportunities for their strikers like Simon Terroda and Sebastian Poulter. Last season, Union saint gilloise showcased an impressive attacking strategy that focused on utilizing the wide areas of the field. They didn't rely solely on crosses to create scoring opportunities. They employed various tactics to penetrate and convert chances from these wide channels. This versatile approach kept their opponents guessing and increased their chances of finding the back of the net. They aimed to create overloads in this region, forming passing triangles and utilizing well-coordinated movements to swiftly penetrate the opposition's defense. This tactical approach proved highly effective in breaking down their opposition and achieving scoring opportunities. In this example, USG cleverly formed a triangle on the near side wide channel. By utilizing the wingback's pass to the central player, they managed to grab the attention of Club Rouge defenders who were in close proximity. With the defenders drawn towards the ball, the player in possession had excellent opportunities with both a central run and an outside run. A quick one-touch pass could effortlessly connect with either of the options, adding a dynamic element of the game. Though Schalke may have the wide game crosses in their arsenal, this sort of aspect in their game does not exist at the moment. Expect Gerards to make a heavy influence in this aspect of the game, and we should anticipate Schalke to play a much quicker style, looking for a plan B when plan A is not available. Now, attack is not the only name in the game when it comes to Karel Gerrards. USG last season performed exceptionally well in the Belgian Pro League. They only conceded 49 goals, placing them among the top five teams with the best defensive record. Moreover, their impressive goal differential of plus 29 further highlighted their strong performances on both ends of the pitch. The defensive strength of the team can largely be attributed to the strategic formation chosen by Gerards, which was the 3-5-2. In moments when they lost possession, 
This formation seamlessly transitioned into a solid 5-3-2 with the wingbacks adapting and reinforcing the defensive line. That tactical approach ensured greater stability and minimized chances for opponents to exploit any weaknesses in their defenses. What we saw from Schalke two years ago was a similar situation where Thomas Oweyon and Aiden would drop back to form a back five. Once Schalke adapted this and came comfortable with this formation, that's when they went on their run at the end of the season and ended up winning the title. Schalke should hopefully be able to adapt to this quickly, stabilize their defense, stop any goals from leaking, and thus be able to focus more on the offensive side of the pitch. How did Gerard's teams get the ball back? By pressing? No, Captain Sweatpants, by Gagan pressing. Last season, USG was a team that may not have prioritized defensive play, but as mentioned before, they posed a real threat when it came to regaining possession in the attacking third. Their strong inclination towards counter-pressing made them a force to be reckoned with in those situations. What we've seen this so far this season through Schalke is when they lose the ball, they just retreat automatically. Majority of the time, they are out of position. What Gerrard will imply is a way to get the ball back as soon as they turn it over and always be in a position that they can defend without being attacked. To give you an example of what Gerrard will employ, last year they had an impressive performance with 401 counter-pressing and recoveries, which was the second highest in the Belgian league. What's even more remarkable is that 100 of these recoveries were dangerous and resulted in a shot within just 20 seconds. Their ability to swiftly capitalize on these opportunities set them apart from other teams in the league. This will benefit Schalke immensely from the beginning. And much like Pep Guardiola's teams, the initial five seconds following loss of possession are absolutely crucial for Gerard's tactics. This short period strongly influenced USG's strategy as it determined whether they, they maintain an aggressive offensive stance or quickly transition into a defensive formation that was both rigid and compact. By pressing immediately as soon as you lose possession, it allows your defense to get into shape to prevent any counterattacks while trying to get the ball back and stay in the attacking mode. To give you a first-hand perspective, let's hear from Carl Gerard himself. I've got some insightful clips and quotes from today's press conference where he discussed his philosophy and how he adapts his tactics to different situations. I think first of all you need to always to look to the culture of the club where you belong. But I think it's clear that I am a coach who likes to play good structured, organized football from behind. I want to see a lot of movements in the team. And of course, for me, football, it's all about the intensity, about how you play with the ball, with that ball. So I think I will start step by step to implement my, my philosophy. I think football is more than only the, the ball. I think uh, the mental aspect of the players uh, is so important. Uh, so I will implement my, my way of work and step by step. I, I, I strongly believe that we can have a long vision in, the, in this club. To be honest, I was both. I was a midfielder playing number eight. So I need to attack and to defend. So uh, you know, even 15 years ago, I was already a modern football player. <laughs> so I will expect from my team to attack all, to defend all. It will, not be, it will not be a secret. Uh, first of all, of course, I have already a, a vision about the squad, but now from Wednesday I will be on the training field and I will feel my players. I will also have a lot of uh, communications with them, a lot of uh, conversations, because I think it's, uh, it's very important. So uh, when I feel that the team can play the best in 3-5-2, I will do. If I feel the team play better in another formation, I will also do so. Uh, I must stick to, to one formation. I like to have uh, different and more options. Gerards isn't just about winning games. He's about transforming teams and elevating players. We'll explore his coaching style has influenced the footballing careers of those under his guidance. I like to work with the players. Uh, I don't care which age they have. I think uh, you always can improve. So it will be also one of my, my key points also to work with the uh, with the players individual to, to make them better. I think uh, we have a lot of good examples uh, last year for Union saint -Gilles. One player came like unknown in, to Belgium. Today he's a, a big player in Germany at, uh, at Leverkusen. So that's because of, of course, himself. He has talent, he worked hard, but we worked with him. In conclusion, Gerard will be determined to surpass his predecessor and take Schalke to great heights not only in the Zweite Liga, but in the Bundesliga next season if they achieve promotion. The anti shaka appointment by the supervisory board has the fan base buzzing again and that they took a chance with a talented manager from outside of Germany. Hopefully, Karel Gerards can stabilize our ship and get us back on track. We'll catch you on the next podcast very, very soon. Glück auf!